promo cat here with a look at the next episode of the Friday Zone. Go bear, go bear, go bear, go bear. What is that on your arm? It's a cruise. Hey guys, we're here with our friends Elizabeth and Ella, and we're going to be learning a little bit about ballet today. So check out the next episode of the Friday Zone, right now. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the GigaCity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high-quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. The show is all about moving, so I'm going for a run. See you later. Uh, okay. While you're out moving, I'll be grooving. Welcome to the Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Cassia. And I'm Ethan. We're moving and grooving today, Cass. <laughs> yeah, we've got a field trip to the Windfall Dancer Studio coming up later. And an instructor will be coming by to give us a dance lesson. Right. But before we dance, a dancing bear on, on the, the Friday Zone, Zone playlist. playlist. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's right, bears. Are you in the house? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know oh, her. Let house. me count the bears. One, yeah. two, yeah. three, yeah. and four. That's me. Yeah. All right. Let me in, because I want to sing the Goldilocks. Here we go. The bears lived at the edge of the wood, doing everything that a bunch of bears should. Eating bugs and leaves, scratching on trees, hibernating for months with lots of ease. But the littlest bear, I'm told, she didn't seem to fit the normal bear mold. Dancing to the beat of the buzzing bees. I'm moving to the rhythm of the babbling creek. Why are you acting like that? All the bears would say, and she replied, I just made this way. I think today might be the day I leave the wood, OK? <laughs> The caravan of wagons all filled with hay. It was on the go, go. moving slow. slow. With a painted sign and a circus show. There was a penguin at the wheel. She hit the brakes with a little squill. Wanna join, join our crew? crew? What do you do when the bear let loose with, with a move on two?
up the tents in a little meadow Where all the forest animals like to go For three whole nights By firefly lights The creatures took in all the marvelous sights There's a sword swallowing doll Uh-huh Followed by a fire juggling frog Oh, yeah Three acrobatic pigs on the trapeze But what brought the crowd to their knees? Pause a little man with sparkling dancing, dancing shoes. shoes And the craziest set of dancing, dancing moves, moves. Happy left and right She was quite a sight And they chanted throughout the night For oh, the dancing man Sydney, good to see you. Hi, good boys. to see you too. <gasps> Lauren, what the, what is that on your arm? It's a bruise. <gasps> Sometimes it happens whenever you bump yourself, like on your arm or your leg. Oh. And what it is, is the tubes underneath your skin that are filled with blood. Sometimes they can break and some oh. of the blood can come out. Oh no. So what happens to the bruise? Is that gonna be on your arm forever? No, this is just the first stage. Oh. So within the first few days, it'll look like this. Uh -huh. It'll be red and purple. Uh -huh. Then after a few days, it'll turn purple and black. Whoa, look at that. That looks totally different. I know. After a week or so, after you bump your arm, it will be a yellowish, brownish, tannish color. Wow. And then as it fades, second week about, it turns to a brownish and lighter, and then it disappears. Wow. Sydney, why does it change colors like that? Well, it's healing. So as the weeks go by, the blood kind of dissipates and doesn't stay oh. in your arm right there forever. Wow, that is so neat. I didn't know that bruises changed colors. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so, so, and then the bruise goes away, right? You don't have it forever? Yes, mm -hmm. and oh, they are harmless. Oh, wow. It just means you have a bad boo-boo, but it will go away. Mm-hmm. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Our friend is here to show us how to make a fish out of a paper plate. We're going to need some paint, glue, some paint brushes, scissors, googly eyes, and of course, a paper plate. First, use your scissors to cut a triangle out of your paper plate. Now your fish has a mouth. Glue your triangle cutout onto the back of the paper plate to give your fish a tail. Now you can get creative. Paint your fish however you want. Finally, glue a googly eye above your fish's mouth. Wait for your creation to dry, and you have your very own paper plate fish friend. Hey guys, we're here with some friends along with Chelsea from the Windfall Dance Studio in Bloomington. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good, awesome. And we're going to get a dance lesson right here in the zone. But first, let's check out Windfall Dance in the fitness zone. I'm Cassia, and we're here today at the Windfall Dancer Studio, and we're going to learn a little bit about ballet. Why don't we head inside? Hey guys, we're here with our friends Elizabeth and Ella, and we're going to be learning a little bit about ballet today. So, what's like a basic step that we can start with? Well, one basic ballet step is called a plie. It's French for a bend. Okay. Usually we do this in first position at the beginning of ballet class, and it means just to bend your knees and straighten. 
Okay, it's, it looks so easy, but it has to be harder than that. What, what's actually happening in your body when you do a plie? Well, instead of turning out from the knees, we, like, we should turn out from our hip sockets. From our hip sockets. And okay. that way, the whole leg is healthfully turned out, and um, not, that way your knees aren't getting any damage. And then you just bend, make sure your heels are on the floor. Okay, your heels are on the floor. What if you go a lot farther down, though? Like, what, how do you keep your your heels on the ground. So, well, that is called a grand plie. Okay. This is a demi plie, and then in a grand plie, that's where your heels come off the floor, and then the first thing you want to do is press those heels into the floor and come back up. We're here with a couple more windfall dancers. We have Addison and Sophia, and we're gonna learn how to do a chasse. Yeah. A chasse, and what does that mean? It means to chase. To chase. Okay, so uh, how do we start? So you're gonna start with your leg, with your right leg out. Okay. Then you're gonna like do a transfer of your weight uh -huh. to have your front foot, well your back foot chase your, chase your front foot. Oh, okay, and that's why it's called a chase. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, you'd go, right. Ooh, that's fancy. And then, does this, does it keep moving? What happens? Um, when you do chasses, you usually alternate. Mm -hmm. So you'd go um, chasse, and then you'd plie in this leg, and do it with the other. So much fun today here with the Windfall Juniors. We learned how to do plies, and we learned arm placements, and we learned how to do chasses, and I hope everybody at home learns how to do ballet because everybody should dance a little bit in their lives, right? Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. And now, a story from a winner of the WTIU Kids Writers Contest. I came into this world broken and blue, with oxygen and meds, then lifeline too. My doctor ran test after test, hoping for answers to know what's best. They told my mom how fragile my life would be, but my mom knew CHD wouldn't stop me. You see my chest has battle scars for all to see. I fight with every heartbeat, that's just me. I was born a warrior with only half a heart. I now raise awareness and do my part. My hospital and doctors are the best. They keep my heart beating inside my chest. How would you like to see something you wrote on the Friday Zone? It's easy. Just enter the WTIU Kids Writers Contest. Ask your teacher how to enter, or request an entry form from WTIU at indiana.edu. Wow, that was super cool. Thank you, Cassia, for showing us Windfall Dance Studio. Yeah, that was so much fun. Thank you, Chelsea. And, and uh, Chelsea's going to do a combination for us, correct? Yes, yes, I am. Oh, cool. We're well, super excited. Yay. Okay, let's give her a hand, guys. Woo! And you're going to teach us some moves, right? You bet. Yes, cool. I am. Cool. We're super excited to learn when we come back. In the Friday Zone Friday. Come on, Zark! I'm coming! I'm coming! Um, 
What took you so long? I brought snacks. Oh, um, what is that? Worms and beetles oh. and and juicy leftover sneezles. Sneezles? Use tissues with an extra helping of snot. I'm sorry, I asked. Want some? Would you like me to read an Emily Dickinson poem? No, 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 no. Definitely not the Dickinson. Maybe a little Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> you promised. I, please, please, Peggy girl child. <laughs> All right. The Conqueror Worm by E. A. P. Lo, it's Galanite, within the lonesome latter years, an angel throng, bewinged, bedight in veils. What's that? Uh, what's what? Uh, that bedding word, is it a pillow? Uh, no, silly. Bedight means to decorate. Oh. Bedight in veils and drowned in tears, sit in a theater to see a play of hopes and fears, while the orchestra breathes fitfully the music of the spheres. Is it the bells? Uh, no, Zarg, it isn't the bells. <sighs> mimes in the form of God on high. Zarg does not <clears throat> like mimes. Mutter and mumble low. Uh, someone else that I know. Who, me? And hither and thither fly. Mere puppets they who come and go at bidding of vast formless things that shift the scenery to and fro, flapping from out their condor wings, invisible woe. I love the Dark Lord's poetry. I know, Zarg. <laughs> I know. <laughs> something crazy for you today. Lay it on me, Sammy. Mrs. Johnson's house was broken into, and her prized miniature vase was broken. B, how do we figure out who did it? It's simple, Sammy. We're going to use fingerprints. Uh, fingerprints? Well, look here. Take your finger and color it with this ink pad. Now, press it onto the paper. It's your fingerprint. See all the little circles? Every single person has different fingerprints. They're like snowflakes. No two are the same. Oh, okay, I got it. But how is that going to help us out here? You may not see them now, but there are fingerprints all over this vase. And we're going to find them. First, we sprinkle some cocoa powder onto the vase. Okay, I see, I see. Next, we brush away the excess powder. <gasps> Last, we take a clear piece of tape Pick up the fingerprint off of the vase. And tape it on a piece of paper. And there it is. Let's get this on a close up in our file. Okay, I see it, but how do we know whose fingerprint this is? I've also got some other fingerprints on file. Let's compare it to some of those. Which suspect's print matches the one we found? This one is kind of roundish. That one is more circular. Oh, boy, I think it looks like number two. Yes, it is. Number two, Jay Walker. He smashed the vase. I'll go bring him in for questioning. Hang on, Sammy. Wait a second. Look, it's Professor Thorne. Not again. I'll catch you one day, Thorn. Thanks to you all for helping us solve the case. See you next time. Hello, everyone. I'm an antelope. That's spelled A-N-T-E-L-O-P-E. 
This show usually starts with a joke, so here's one. How come antelopes don't get married? Because we can't elope. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I blame the writer. Today on All About Animals, we're going to talk about me, antelopes. <laughs> Antelope. My name is John. I have so many questions to ask you. Where do you live? We antelopes live in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and North America. What do you like to eat? I like to eat pizza. Do you like to eat pizza? We antelopes are herbivores, so we don't eat pizza. Herbivores eat leaves and plants. But my favorite food is grass. Do you know that some antelopes follow zebras around because the zebras eat all the tough grass? We antelopes prefer the tender grass. Do zebras eat pizza? No, zebras and antelopes don't eat pizza. What about grass pizza? No, no grass pizza for us. Somebody told me that antelopes are related to cows. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Cows and antelopes are bovines. We are also related to goats and sheep. Do goats eat pizza? I don't know. But goats eat everything. Well, that's true. I'm an antelope, and thanks for watching All About Animals. Hey guys, we're back and we're gonna do a little bit of dancing. So Chelsea, what are we gonna get started with? We are gonna learn a balancé today. So a balancé is a French word, but it is the same in English, is to balance your weight as you shift from one foot to the next. So just to start, bring your feet apart and I want you to shift your weight, which means you shift onto one foot and all of your uh, body weight is on that side. So you could actually shake this leg, right? Because your, your weight is off, yeah? And then wow. shift to the other side. So practice right shifting up. your weight from Keep side to side. Perfect. Very good. Super fun, okay. And you don't have to go just side to side. You can also go front to back. You can go on a diagonal. Very good, good job. Yeah, oh, very nice. <laughs> it's a lateral T, we're getting into some contemporary. <laughs> good job. Okay, so a balancé, let's make it a little bit trickier. So you step on one side and then you're gonna go, um, you're gonna switch your weight uh, really briefly. It's, in a, it's a three count step. So you go down, up, up, uh, down, up, down. And then go the other way. Down, down up, up, down. Yeah. Try again. Balance. Balance. Again. Balance. Good. And then once you get the hang of it, you don't have to go from the side to side. You can go front to back. You can go on diagonals. So go ahead and try it in different ways. Down, up, down, shifting your weight in different directions. Now if you think you've got that down, okay. what if you add some fun arms, Ooh. any kind of arms that you want to do? Very good. Good job. Yes. Yeah. Wow, your arms are super cool. Very nice. <laughs> like a jellyfish. Another three count step, since we're talking about counting, is called a pas de bourre. Oh, and that wow. is you cross to the back, step your foot to the back, take the foot that, that's in the front and put it out to the side and then step that foot that was in the back to the front. And so, Chelsea, what does a pas de bourre mean? Uh, st I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, step of, it's, it's step a- Step of the- Okay. I think it means to glide. Or carriage or something? It's not a step of the it's not step of the cat, but I do know that it means to glide. Yeah. So you to step glide. back, side, side front. front. Pa de boo re. Pa de boo re. And if you've really got it, you can start turning it by going different directions. Back, side, front. Back, side, front. Okay. So those are two different steps that are in the count of three. You have a balance, balance, balance. or you have a pa de bourre. Pa de bourre. Good? Awesome. Cool, that makes a lot of sense. And we're yeah, gonna do you. a little activity, right? We're gonna yes. learn a dance. So one of the reasons why dance is such a fun fitness is that you can take all of the technique that you do and you can put it in your own sequence, or your own fun phrase. Okay, so what we're gonna do in dance, most of the time, sometimes we count in threes like we just did, but a lot of times we count to eight. Let's all practice counting to eight. One, One two, two, three, four, four 
five, six, seven, eight. Good. Now if you're uh, doing dance, you go right back to one. So you never go back to up to nine, you go right back to one. Okay. So we're gonna do two counts of eight and everybody's gonna make up their own dance move that's two counts. Does that make sense? Does everyone get, does everyone get that? Yeah, now like... you have to remember what your friend did because we're gonna put them all together in one dance sequence. Okay. And this is something really fun that you can do at home with your parents or your friends. Yeah. You don't have to be at a dance studio to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go first. I'm gonna switch over here so we can go in a line. And if you come to my side here, that'd be right awesome. Here. Thank you. Okay. So our first move is we're gonna go one, two. Can we all try one, that? Two. One, two. one, two. Now my friend here, can you do three, four in a different move? Now you have to remember we came up from here. One, two. One, two. You can do anything you anything want. Anything you wanna do. Now, if you're not really sure what to do, you can think about your space. You can go down on levels, you can go up, you can uh, go on different directions, you can make curvy lines, you can make straight lines, you could do a turn. What do you what think? What about if we're right here? What if we did like three, four? How about that? Is that a good, do you like that? Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think you want something fancier than that. <laughs> you want something better than that, right? Go ahead and try anything you want. Beautiful, oh, perfect. good job, yes. Cool. And so, in dance two, there's not a mistake that we can make. Everything is valid. One, two, two and then three, three four. four. Cassia, can you do five, six? We're gonna go five, six, five, six. Five. So we had all together, one, two, two three, three, four, five, six. six. My friend here, can you do seven, eight? Beautiful, seven, eight. seven eight. eight. So if we do that all together really quick, we yep. have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was so Ooh, awesome, was awesome, guys. You guys were so good, and we learned so much about dancing today. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank and you. And thank you guys for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to visit our website, fridayzone.org, to watch videos, play games, and see behind-the-scenes photos. And remember to live, learn, and play the, the Friday Zone, Zone way. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education dedicated to improving teaching and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the GigaCity Company a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby, tell us about an event, or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at fridayzone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu. Right meow!